All right. I got an idea for a fun game. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... We're going to go through the offense and defense. All right. You want offense or defense? You don't even know what I'm talking about. But you're I'll take offense. You want to take offense? I'll yeah. take defense. Okay. After you hit that subscribe bell, be sure to head over to Sportscaster and join us every Saturday at 8 a.m. You can give that one a shot again. Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, uh, before you watch the video, Paul and I have a very special announcement. We've been banging the drum for this for a couple weeks, and mm -hmm. time's running out, and spaces are running out. So mm -hmm. if you want a chance to get into the uh, giveaway that we're doing with all the Bills merch and donate to a wonderful uh, foundation, um, Paul's going to give you some information on that right now. <laughs> so in the description, you're going to find our PayPal, our Venmo, and our Cash App. It, uh, we're doing your traditional football squares, right? Uh, it is $5 a square, a maximum of five squares per game. Now, we're doing the next four games, right? Yep, so you can get into them all right now if you want. So you got the Ravens, the Steelers, the, Steelers, the Patriots, Patriots, and, and the, the Jets, Jets okay. right? So those four games. Uh, we're giving away autographed merch. It's stuff that we got signed for you. And the great thing is it's totally random. So you don't have to pick what square you want. We're going to randomly assign them. And we're also randomly assigning the prizes. Exactly. So we don't know what you're going to win either. Nope. Uh, we're going to reveal those on our post game or for doing the play-by-play -play on uh, Sportscaster or YouTube. We're going to open them right at halftime. Yep, absolutely. Um, and we're going to send them to you and ship them to you. But you want to get in now because we're trying to raise $2,000 for the Punt Foundation and spots are really starting to fly out. So if you want to get in on a chance to win some pretty awesome autograph merch, I'm talking a Levi Wallace autograph helmet, a Devin Singletary autograph mini helmet. Ed uh, Oliver. An Ed Oliver autograph mini helmet. A Harrison Phillips uh, mini football. Um, a Trey, Trey, no, Trey? I think we have a mini football for Trey White. I don't know. We do have a mini football for Trey We got White. a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of stuff that we're giving away. Yeah, we but do. it's Bill's merch, and you're donating to a great cause, the Punt Foundation, mm -hmm. Brian Mormon's Punt Foundation. We're working in conjunction with 26 Shirts and uh, Dave and Adam. So we mm -hmm. want to do this. You guys have given us so much. We want to try to give back. Yep. And uh, we're and you can win some sweet Bill stuff in, yep. in the process. So. Oh, we'd love to send it to you. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd so. love to send it anywhere in the world. We don't care. We sent one giveaway to Italy. We don't care. Yeah, so we'll send it wherever, wherever you live. That's where it'll go. We <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. sent that. Oh, yeah, the autograph Thurman and Tom, uh, Thomas helmet. Yeah. Um, so after you're done subscribing and watching the video, please click click down in the links. We mm -hmm. got PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App, and uh, let's go to the video. Yep. So Paul, here's what I want to do for this game. What I want to do is I want to, uh, I want to pick a player. You take the offense. I'll take the defense. Yep. I'm gonna give you the player's name. You give me one word and a little bit of explanation after that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll uh, we'll dance. We'll see how that goes. Okay. All right. Rock paper scissors to find out who goes first. Sure. Okay. Uh, best two out of three or one on one. Two out of three. Okay. Ready. Jesus. Okay. One. Whoa. <laughs> Go. Uh, I'm gonna give you one. Uh, this uh, sucks. <laughs> the RPS championships are in Vegas. Is fifty grand for the winner. <laughs> Letting you guys know. Um, so, all right, the first player for the offense that I'm going to give you. Yep. Go ahead, just say it. Dawson Knox. Ooh. First Versatile. Versatile. I Versatile. Like um, yeah, Dawson Knox has, has really proven himself uh, to, to be able to play a lot of snaps on an NFL level. Because here's a guy that came in with near no college receptions, right? Mm -hmm. He was a relatively unknown. Everybody looked at him. Well, he was in a high-powered offense. You know, he's he was fine. He was, you know. There we go. He was fine. He was fine. There it is. Um, has talent. Little undersized. Don't know if he can block in the run game. And now he's playing a, a, an absolute monster, a monster amount of snaps in this offense. And while he does have a learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. There, there's a definite learning curve to the NFL. Um, we saw it again in Dallas where he started throwing bodies again after he, after he made a reception, you know, like it's just, he can play angry. And I think another year of him getting bigger in the off season, oh. imagine Dawson knocks 15 pounds up from what he is right now. I don't know Cause he's not going to get slower. I don't, yeah, but I don't know if that would take away his speed. I don't think it's going to make him about. slower. No, I don't think it's going to make him slower. Um, I mean, but he, 15 pounds on him versus 15 pounds on Oliver, completely different thing. Very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very, very different. Um, no, I think I think if you can if you can bulk knocks up, 
Okay, we'll go with 10. We can bulk knock up 10. Uh, you see him, how he can throw bodies. I don't want him getting suspended for four games. <laughs> <laughs> don't want him out there like DK Metcalf. <laughs> What's up? What's up? You always look like you're carrying two briefcases. <laughs> I'm going to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you know, it, Knox has had problems with drops, right? Like, that's, that is a statistic. Mm-hmm. Even though Fox Sports says he's got, like, eight, and Pro Football Focus says he's got, like, four, right? There's still some on the board. But I'm, that's, I'm it's, a learning, it's a learning curve. Oh, get out of here. It's a learning curve. So, um, yeah, I think he's proven to be a more versatile player than they thought they were getting right now. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think they knew that they were going to get a player that was going to be, be able to contribute in multiple facets of the game. I just don't know if they knew they were getting him right now. No, and then they that's worked, why you signed Croft. They, yeah, they worked him in. They said, "Listen, yeah. it was almost by uh, because of the injury, he was able to get that necessary experience, mm-hmm. and then ended up just you know keep going, keep growing from there." Yep. I like it. All right, your turn. Ready? Sweet. Trent Murphy. Solid. Solid. Okay. Solid. Yeah, we've we have been ultra critical of, of Trent Murphy. We have. And I will, I will be the first one to admit that. The thing that I say Trent Murphy is solid is because uh, and a lot of things that I've echoed throughout the year that I've seen on tape is the fact that he is so, probably more so than anybody on the defensive side of the ball, mm-hmm. maybe even more than Trey White. And, and that's that's saying Ooh, something. Okay, I'd like to see I'm, where you're going with I'm this. talking fundamentally sound in his okay. position. Yeah. Now, Trey White, this, the, 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 I just want to mention this. During the game, he got called for those illegal contacts. He wasn't changing the way he was playing the nope. position the whole day. You can throw as many flags as you want on me. I'm going to play aggressive. That's what I'm going to do. And he's fundamentally he's phenomenal, Trey White. You want to talk about Trent Murphy from a defensive end standpoint on what he's asked to do on a play-to-play basis. Mm-hmm. He's not getting paid a ton of money. He's, he's getting paid enough, though. He's getting paid enough yeah. to set the edge, yep. take on blockers, take on pulling guards, mm-hmm. do everything you need to do. Does he get some sacks here and there? Well, you know, it's not, it's not eye-popping stats. Right. Does he take care of that side? Mm-hmm. Do guys run outside of him? Nope, no, they, they don't. don't. Do guys have to go inside and do the cutback and then in, in the Edmonds and Milano for them to clean it up? Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Does he um, Does he like quarterbacks that, that have to be a little bit more mobile go, get outside of him? No, we see him go on, on Jerry's side. Yeah. Quarterbacks, they'll go on, over on Jerry's side. And I'm not trying to talk down about Jerry. But what I'm saying is he has been so fundamentally sound and solid in this defense that when he's, when he's not in there, I mean, you see Shaq get all these. Mm-hmm. They, it seems like they put Shaq in on long passing downs for him right. to try to rush. But when you see Murphy in there, he's so technically sound in everything that he's doing mm-hmm. is that he makes that that one facet of that four-man front work so well. So dependable, right? Exactly. He's a very dependable player. He's, he's the, he's the um, hard hat lunchbox kid that comes in. Yep. You, know, you know that – Oh, he's not calling in sick today. He is your prototypical Sean McDermott defensive end. No doubt. He's just going to he's gonna do his job, and the production will be there. Whether yeah. it's his production or somebody else's, because he, it, he's contributing. Because it works in the framework of the entire defensive right. philosophy. If you just do this, mm-hmm. yep. we're going to be good. Right. Okay, I won't go outside of that. Right. Fine. Um. <laughs> Don't make me do it. Who? I should. Don't make me do I it. I should do it. I should make you do it. Um, John Brown. Surprising. And I, here's why. So John Brown was a target for the Bills last offseason, decided not to sign here, went to Baltimore instead. Mm-hmm. I think he regretted that decision, right? He may have. I think he, I think he ultimately learned to regret that decision. And then when Buffalo called and they still wanted him, um, I think that made his life a little easier because he was not exactly a heralded wide receiver. People looked at him and said, well, he's just a guy. <laughs> just a guy going to Baltimore for a one-year vacation before you come to Buffalo. Yeah, it's you know, you, I think John Brown looked at it as a calculated risk, right? Because you have a team that's consistently a playoff contender, right? So I'm going to go to Baltimore. I'm going to go I'm gonna try and, you know, find a playoff team. That's Maybe that was his motivation, right? Yeah. But it, when he was with Bruce Arians in Arizona, he was a player who you could tell could be dangerous, but wasn't consistent at all. No, and it, it, he was he. There was a lot of miles to feed out in Arizona. Sure were. And he wasn't uh, one of the biggest guys at the table. Nope, sure was, unfortunately. So. Yep. I, I'm I'm gonna say that John Brown is surprising because um, when you sign him and Cole Beasley 
literally within four minutes of each other. <laughs> um, and you have Zay Jones here already, right? Yeah. So go back and look at what he was when you brought him in. Um, you were bringing him in to be one of the four number twos that you had on your roster, right? And he has not turned into that. No. He's, he's, he's been a much bigger piece than that. And, um, you know, part of the narrative that this is a place where you can show people who you are. In Buffalo, you, he got the opportunity to show people who he is. Now, is John, John Brown's contract the next two years a bargain based off of what we see right now? Sure is. Absolutely. Big time bargain, right? Was it three a, for 30 or something like that? Way less than that. Oh. Oh, no, dude. I don't even know if he's making six a year. It wouldn't be complete. I just know Johnny Hawkins and Sloan Kettering. And we used to burn that every day. So it's that brother. Okay. Good talk. Um, seven five this year. But oh. nine seven the next two years. Oh yeah. So So that's bargain. Yeah, big time bargain. But his base salary this year, three point eight. His base salary next year is seven. So the Bills signed that they brought him in to say sure we'll give you you know we'll pay you we'll pay you you know some good money right we'll more pay than a good a one money. year deal more than a one-year deal but the bills were in control because they're like okay we're in for year one but year two year three they could cut john brown right now and they could walk away with three mil in dead cap space mm-hmm. you know de- in a dead cap head they could walk away from john brown right now if it didn't work out you would no oh, gosh no oh no i mean that's all i'm saying yeah no, so John Brown's surprising. This is not the player I thought he was. I just, I, he's, this is not the player I thought he was. He's, he's far exceeded, far exceeded my expectations. So if you weren't, if you weren't clear cut sold on him being a one, does this, yeah, no way. does this prove also the theory that the Earnhardt Perkins system is consistent if you just have a bunch of twos? Well, and this is where I think, you know, the free agent signings made a lot of sense because they brought in as many wide receivers as they could get. It was about who could pick it up first. Yeah. Because none of these guys had experience in the system. It's not like you're out there grabbing guys who had, who had played for the Patriots. No. Because they didn't, all. you know? Like, I can go grab, uh, what, Aaron Dobson? Was that a failed Patriots wide Plus receiver? Plus, there were guys that didn't even grasp it in New England. If you don't grasp it in New England, they're not right. going to keep you. Exactly. Right, exactly. And that's always the risk. That's why New England always shuffles guys in and out, because you're going to get it or you're not. Yeah. They, they don't, they're not going to waste time no. waiting, waiting it out with you. Absolutely not. All right, your turn. You ready? Sure. Mm-hmm. Tremaine Edmonds. Put it on T for you. Tremaine Edmonds. Yep. I don't want to say Predator. Go ahead. So bad. Hey, go ahead. I'm going to say maturing this is the word I'm going to use for Tremaine Edmonds. He's maturing. I love what the kid's doing. I love the production he has in the middle. Sideline to sideline. Actually, you know what? I'm going to scratch that. Any physical attribute that you want to attach to Jermaine Edmonds, he has. Yeah. Sideline to sideline speed, strength, <clears throat> ability to, you know, to do a bunch of different things. I think he is he's really stepped up his game from last year to this year as far as the mental aspect of the game, communicating everything with the defense. Mm-hmm. Youngest guy out there, yet he's the guy that has to be the most vocal. Yep. Um, so I just see the, the level of player that he was with the deer and headlights a little bit last year, even though he led the team in tackles last year, mm-hmm. up until this year, what he's able to do, not really getting caught. They're letting him blitz more, which is where he's more comfortable. Right. And you, you let the kid eat and not think so much. Um, and that was all that combined. You're, you're, you're getting a really complete football player, not just a middle linebacker, a football player that – is the is the essentially the quarterback of your defense mm-hmm. and able to execute the things that Frazier wants to execute. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about. Yeah, I I think you know the Bills had to learn to slow the game down for him because mm-hmm. you could tell the game was getting a little quick for him at times, and I, I think by letting him blitz and by putting him it's like uh, a play by moving for him. right, it. yeah, it's you you put the pieces on the board in the right spot and the game slows down for him. You limit his responsibilities. Not to say that you take responsibilities away from him. You just no, 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 no. You you find the opportunities for him to be successful, and that's it. You hope that he recognizes those. And so far, he he has. You know, you could say the Bills. Uh, you know, the interior run game is still giving up some runs, but you can't put that only on Tremaine. And it's okay for him to fail right now. 
You're nine and three. You're still yeah. winning football games. Make some mistakes. It's okay. Out there. It's That's okay fine. to learn. It's. I, I think sometimes as fans we get frustrated because I yelled, "Oh, come on, Tremaine!" like five times in the Dallas game, right? It but it happens, and I'm okay with him learning still. I'll never get mad about the physical mistakes that he makes. No. Uh, oh, you got to make that tackle. Okay, that's going to happen in games. Right. Everyone knows that. Right. The mental thing is is the thing that I, I always run up against because – and he's limited the mistakes he's made this year. You know what I mean? You oh, know? big time. Yeah, it's not the same player at all. No, not at all. Not the same player at all. All right. Go ahead. Devin Singletary. Crazy fun, isn't he? <laughs> so I don't know. I'm gonna go with dynamic. Ooh, I'm gonna I go with it. dynamic. And the reason I say dynamic is I want you to name me first round running backs who are in there on third down to protect their quarterback. That are Elliot? rookies. No, oh, no, that are rookies. No, I can't. Yeah, you can't. Right? I don't even think Sanders. I don't think Montgomery. I don't. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. No. I Those... think Barkley and Elliott were. As rookies, I could, right. but those guys are. But we're talking seventy players difference in a draft board. And McCaffrey, but he was going out in a pattern. Right on third down. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't there protecting. No, McCaffrey wasn't protecting anything. His protection is scary, isn't it? Pass He's, pro. Yeah. Oh Dennis my Singletary god. Singletary is. He is fun to watch in pass per, in pass protection. You know what he reminds me of? Do you ever have you, you're hold, you're holding your kid or your kid whatever? And they stand up really fast, mm. and their head catches you right underneath the chin. Oh yeah, that's why I think of a, about a guy blitzing, and mm. then they meet Singletary in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what? Why? <laughs> Where? Well, Frank Gore said he's Devin Singletary. He and the quote is, "He's heavier than people think he is." Yeah, 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 and he is because he's quick, right? Yeah. I love, I love how patient he is when he's running the football, but. Um, watching Devin Singletary in pass production, again, he makes mistakes. That's okay. Yep. He, there was there was a sack that uh, that Allen took against Dallas. Wasn't on Singletary. He was on the opposite side of Allen. Allen didn't move him over. Singletary yep. didn't recognize he needed to be over on the other side. Corner came off the end, had Allen dead to rights. Singletary tried to get over. No way it was going to happen. Play, you know what play I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I don't put that on Singletary. No, I mean, he's still learning. He's you know? not going to play a perfect game. And right. He's, he has been so phenomenal in pass pro. And you know what, though? That's the weird, that's the weird part about you and me. Mm-hmm. To get on the field on a third down, you have to be able to, to pass protect. Right. Okay? That's the biggest hurdle that rookies mm-hmm. seem to climb. Yeah. We haven't talked about his running. We nope. haven't talked about his receiving. Nope. Two things that I think everyone knows about at this point. Mm-hmm. His vision is phenomenal. He does yep. all sorts of stuff. But that is the, the number one thing. That you have to do to stay on the field as a, yeah. as a pro, as a running back, and be able to pick up pass pro. And I'm loving what the kids do. Oh, absolutely. I'm absolutely loving what the kids yeah, do. and I love how like he's not afraid of anybody. No, he, he does care. not care. And I love what Cor said about him. He's like he's just quiet. He just mm-hmm. comes in, does his job. And he, that's it. He doesn't yep. want to talk. He doesn't want to. And it's, oh, he's man. there to play football. He's a football player. I, I think him. you could say that about you know you look at this draft class, this last draft class. They drafted just a bunch of football players. They and they're like, we're, we'll figure out what to do with them. We're just going to draft the best football players we can find. We'll figure <laughs> out what to do with them. Which is different. You know, we were talking about Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson on another episode. You all right, hon? I haven't done that in a while. That's so good. You been working out? <laughs> Oh my god. You know I'm really into fitness. <laughs> Fitting this whole pizza in my mouth. <laughs> but I think that, that that draws a very a stark contrast between we just talked about Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson. Yeah. Right? And we're talking about motivation being a problem for them. Or it could be a you you have to worry about keeping them motivated. I'm not saying that they, they you know that they're problems, but I'm just saying it, it's no, no, no. it's a conversation you could legitimately have. And you can't have that about any of the kids they drafted. No. All right, your turn. Ready? My turn. Uh, so who have you done already? You've done Trent Murphy and Tremaine Edmonds. Yes. Levi Wallace. Confused. Okay. I'm confused. You're confused. <laughs> uh, no, if I was to pick one. What, what is this, a school for ants? 
How can they learn to read if they can't even get inside the building? <laughs> Uh, if I was to pick a word for Levi Wallace, misunderstood, and I'll tell you why. This guy was doing phenomenal things the first four weeks of the season. Everyone was loving what he was doing. Those weren't blitzing that much. They had to play a lot of zone. Co- they were playing a lot of zone coverage behind it. What happens to be Levi's strength? We're talking about an undrafted free agent. Here. This isn't a guy that was highly sought out by anybody. Mm-hmm. And as you and I have mentioned many times, probably a manifestation of being in Alabama with Dable. Like, hey, this guy's been beating us up in practice every day. Mm-hmm. You might, it might, it's a guy you might want to take a look at, uh, Sean. So, that, that I think, and the other, the, other, the other reason that he's misunderstood is that people were seeing his production opposite of Trey White. Yeah. And you can't do that. You no. can't. Trey White is clearly making, if not the top, maybe the top three corner in the league. Mm-hmm. Of course yeah. he's going to see more action on the other side of him. Right. Um, and then when you put him in man, he just struggled a little bit. I mean, we had said for the longest time all year, Trey's really good at the big wide receivers. You want to put Wallace on the speedy guys. Well, it, he was having some trouble because some of the matchups that we're having – and I don't blame the, the Browns game on Wallace at all. No. I mean, th- there's two number one stud wideouts. I'm yeah. not blaming him for that. I mean, uh, Beckham went five for 57 that game, and Trey had him locked down. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't blame him. And there's a couple ca- the passes that Landry caught that Trey was on him. Mm-hmm. So, it wasn't all Wallace. Although people thought he got exposed, I think he's a solid corner. I think he's a great depth guy. I think that he, he excels more in zone than he does in man. Mm-hmm. Whereas Kevin Johnson is of the opposite. He, he excels more in man than in zone. Right. So I think he's just really misunderstood. I think he's a solid player. I just – you compare him to Trey White, you're doing the kid a disservice. Sure. Well, and I think, you know, you take a look at the Levi Wallace and Robert Foster signings and you say, you know, you go back to when Dable was hired and they said probably, all right, who are, who are two guys that we don't have here that you know about that nobody else does, and Robert Foster and Levi Wallace might have been those names, right? No doubt. So I think so. I think Levi Wallace is is a great one because, um, yeah, I think he is misunderstood. You got it. He's a he's a guy that you have to be careful with how you're going to use him. And people were praising him even even last season for you know his advanced statistics. But advanced statistics can be all can can be the. You could be lying to yourself if you're dying, diving too deep into it. Yeah. Because there's so much that goes into it. Um, but no, I, I think I think you sum up Levi Wallace really well there. You got you got to make sure you're you're putting him in the right situation and ask him to play man is just not that's not the best thing for him. So so far you have done John Brown. Yep. Devin Singletary. Yep. Who else? That? Dawson Knox. Dawson Knox. Deion Dawkins. I knew it was coming. I you knew it was coming. I can't just give you Allen. That's too easy. That's true. I'll give the chat Alan. All right. Hey, y'all, down in the chat, give one word to describe Josh Allen. And Paul will answer all of them. Oh, yeah. Sure, <laughs> sure will. Like Post production. Sure now. will. Yeah. <laughs> sure will. I hate when Mario's like, no, dude, I'll post the video. I'll take care of the video this week. Don't worry about it. He does a live stream. I'm like, thanks a lot. Because I still have to, I have to answer all the comments for a video I'm not even on. I did them. I did them all last night and a little bit this morning. All right, go ahead. Deion Dawkins, one word. And... Improving. <laughs> I knew it was going to be something like that. Improving. Um, <laughs> so I, I think a lot of people are going to look at the last two to three games and say, well, you know, you can't you can't put the sacks that, Daw- that, uh, that Dawkins gave up uh, just on him, you know, um, and I think, I think Dawkins has done, you know, the last four games and a, a, a solid job at left tackle, right? Mm-hmm. He hasn't gotten you in trouble, right? He hasn't killed your quarterback. There's, there's some he's killed plays. Killed a couple drives, though. He's killed a couple drives. <laughs> but, and there are some times you'll go back and you'll look at how he's playing and you go, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa where were you going there? Yeah. Right, yeah. but there's plays like that all over the place. Exactly. I mean, when we did the film room just a couple of weeks ago, 
we just randomly pulled plays, and then we saw three of them where Cody Ford was like, bro, where, where are you right now? Um, and I think that's kind of a testament to the fact that they told – they told Dawkins, listen, you need to step it up because we can't give you time. We can't give you help anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at where help is, help is Cody Ford's side. Yeah. Covered up by a tight end, typically single Terry's on the backside. Right. So they're giving, they're giving Cody Ford a lot of help right now. Yes. Uh, as well as they should. But here's the problem. Teams are going to realize that. Mm-hmm. Right. So what are they going to start doing? They're going to start bringing pressure up the left side. And that's what Dallas did. They brought a lot of pressure up the left side. They didn't bring as much pressure up the right True. as they did the left. Um, so uh, I think uh, I think Dan Dawkins has, has done a very, very good job for the Bills the last the last four games. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that these are long term solutions. Right. That's good. Right. I'm not I'm not going to say they're long-term solutions because you always have to account for the fact that there's a team on the other side that's trying to figure out how to expose your weakness. And Dawkins is not that weakness right now. No, he's not. So, so some of the onus is, is over on Cody Ford's side. Right. But playing the up-tempo offense allows them to mm-hmm. kind of predict where they're going to be defensively. Right. Exactly. Yep. So, I, again, I don't want to praise Dawkins too much uh, for fear that I might actually, you know, Start start liking his level of play. I don't want to. I don't want to praise him too much. You don't want to spontaneously catch on fire. Yeah. No. Can't do that. So I think you also have to be, you know, mindful of the fact that teams know that Cody Ford is the guy to attack right now. So they're they're bringing a little bit more pressure on the other side. I think it's a great point. So I think when you saw tying the second go down, a lot mm-hmm. of the focus went over on Ford's side. So yeah. maybe Dawkins got a break. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Could be. Your turn. Ready. So so far you have done. I have done Tremaine Edmonds, yep. Levi Wallace, mm-hmm. and Trent Murphy. Yep. All right. You're sprinkling it all around for me. I, I appreciate am. that. You're welcome. All right, last one. Are you ready? No. Ed Oliver. You didn't think I was going to give you a star, did you? No. God, this episode would be three hours long. <laughs> Ed Oliver, I'm going to go with Beast. Ooh. The kid is a beast. He is. Even at the weight that he's at, with these 300-pound linemen that he's got to try to go up against, he's undersized. We already beat to death why he's undersized because of the combine and everything. He wanted to show he could play defensive end. But he's coming in at a position that's not easy. Mm-hmm. No. He went from playing a nose to a three technique, mm-hmm. uh, which is already going to be a transition for him. He is throwing around grown men mm-hmm. in the offense. Uh, in the NFL right now. And just some of the plays that he's doing, and you start to see the rotational front of the Buffalo Bills. This is why this happens. This is why right. they do it. You're seeing a rookie in the 12th game of the season, mm-hmm. fresh, throwing offensive lineman of the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Now, true, some of that was on Xavier Suofilo uh, after Williams went down. Hey, Williams is done for the year now. That's yeah. Why but you're st- it's still an offensive line. Like, it's like, oh, Bills are playing, but you're not. It's still an NFL offensive lineman that he's throwing out of the way yeah. to get to get to the quarterback, and he's just a beast because now he's starting to figure out certain techniques to get himself mm-hmm. inside. Yep. Um, you know, just just as Josh Allen has to figure out. Listen, not everyone's going to be wide open. Right. I may have to throw to guys that look like they're covered but mm-hmm. can make plays. Oliver may have to say, listen, I can't bull rush everybody now. I got to try to do something with speed in my hands. And yeah, technically all. he's a much, much better he's player than so he was. So much better. One. Yeah, so, ta- way, way more technical. You go back and watch film of Ed Oliver, Ed Oliver in the first six weeks versus the last, or first six games versus the last six games. It's almost like he's, he's become a different person. Mm-hmm. His, re- he, I think what he's starting to learn more now as far as the defense is concerned, he's starting to realize that his responsibilities, because he did go, come from a nose to a, a, a three tech. Right. His responsibilities are different. So that was the first thing that he had to learn. But that that's for me, for uh, Fred Oliver, he's just a beast. Like, there's no other word that I could describe that monster that they picked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, excellent pickup for the Buffalo Bills. He's just a beast in there. All right. So that's all of them. I think it is. So we got to pick. We picked Allen for the offense for the chat. Who else yeah. we pick for the defense for the chat? Mm-hmm. Let's get let's put them both on a team. Okay. Let's give them Allen and White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. So yeah. in the comment section, give us your one word. Uh, Allen dash what? White dash. 
whatever you think. One word to describe both of those players for the Buffalo Bills. This Perfect. So far. Love it. I like it.